Let's talk about cerebral amyloid angiopathy. So this is the, a disease of old age and it's pretty rare under age 55 and it gets more common with older age. So it's characterized by amyloid beta deposits in the small to medium sized blood vessels in the brain and these predispose to hemorrhage. There is a genetic component so ApoE2 and E4 are more associated with hemorrhage compared to uh, the more normal E3 genotype. And this disease can be associated with Alzheimer disease, but not with other systemic amyloidoses. The main feature that you need to know is that this can cause a spontaneous low bar hemorrhage which is seen here in the CT scan. And these hemorrhages are low bar, meaning that they're more out here near the cortex instead of in the subcortical deep matter, such as the basal ganglia. And these hemorrhages can, can also extend to the subarachnoid space and cause some subarachnoid hemorrhage. There's another feature that you can see in cerebral amyloid angiopathy called cortical superficial siderosis and this is thought to be due to the chronic components of subarachnoid hemorrhage where iron and hemosiderin break down and are deposited in the peel and subpeel regions of the brain and you can see this on uh, MRI. Another feature that you can see on MRI are chronic microbleeds, and you can see these on the gradient echo or susceptibility weighted MRI. And these appear as small black dots, like here. And one thing to note is that if you have more than 10 of these microbleeds, that's a relative contraindication to TPA, both now and in the future. There are some other clinical features that you can see with amyloid angiopathy and that can include cognitive impairment and dementia. There can also be transient focal neurologic episodes that can mimic either seizures or strokes, and there's also a type of inflammatory disease as well. So how to make the diagnosis? The definitive diagnosis is by autopsy. However, in life, you can make a diagnosis of probable cerebral amyloid angiopathy if they're age 55 or older and they have one of these two things either multiple low bar cortical or cortical subcortical hemorrhages uh, or cerebellar hemorrhage or they can have a single low bar cortical or cortical subcortical hemorrhage with superficial siderosis uh, you do need to exclude other causes of hemorrhage or superficial siderosis. And you can strengthen your diagnosis with a biopsy sample, either a brain biopsy or from an evacuated hematoma. What will you see on biopsy? So there will be amyloid beta deposits that stain with Congo red stain. And remember, this affects the blood vessels. So you'll see it here. The treatment is to avoid antiplatelets and anticoagulation unless absolutely uh, indicated. For example, if they have a stent or if they have atrial fibrillation. And if you do need to prescribe anticoagulation, it's preferred to avoid warfarin and try the DOAX or NOAX because of a smaller side effect of intracerebral hemorrhage. Uh, blood pressure management is also important since hypertension is one of the main causes of a hemorrhage. And if someone does get a hemorrhage, then the treatment is the same for uh, those with and without cerebral amyloid angiopathy. In terms of prognosis, mortality in low bar hemorrhages is pretty high. It can range from 10 to 30 percent. And the recurrence rate is also pretty high if you already have a low bar hemorrhage.